So as a bit of a review um, from last time, remember we talked about uh, there, there's all these various terms, but, but I think a, a generic way to talk about this stuff is an emergency is when, when a, a something scary, storm, whatever, comes and, and hits us. Um, if it just hits us, or if it doesn't cause any major damage, or it just um, hurts me, that we can call that a, an emergency. Disaster is when we have many folks involved, or, the, or the, the cost or the magnitude is such that many different aspects of our society are impacted. And then if it's just a huge, massive thing across counties, across whole swaths of an area, then we'd call that a catastrophe, particularly with significant loss of life um, or massive loss of infrastructure. Okay, and then we also mentioned that there's, historically, there's this traditional difference between so-called natural hazards and everything else. And we really mostly, um, again, the, the tradition of this, this type of scholarship is mostly focused on quote-unquote natural disasters. But as we mentioned last time, um, those are important, but increasingly it's become hard to distinguish quote-unquote natural from quote-unquote anthropogenic, and these things are all getting mixed up and that there's pretty much, you know, with the possible exception of, a, of an asteroid coming and smacking us from space, there's pretty much um, no real case of just quote unquote pure natural disaster, right? Everything is complicated by our decisions that we've made in terms of the built environment, in terms of choices we've made with landscapes, all that kind of stuff. Um, okay, and so uh, leading up to this first activity, uh, we mentioned that the way this was viewed historically was when something would happen, when the ground would shake and we had no um, robust understanding of why the ground would shake, we would ascribe some supernatural powers to this. We would subscribe this was God or the deities or, or, or something of that nature. And so the general, term, the, the general term in the English language is we talk about an act of God. Indeed, that's still built into a lot of our insurance policies and things like that. People talk about an act of God, meaning meaning that it sort of came out of the blue. No one could possibly have known that this, was, uh, that this would happen, right? Uh, then, and, and a, uh, as we get um, more sophisticated and have a more robust understanding of how these physical processes work in the, in the natural world, um, we start to switch in the uh, late 19th and the 20th centuries to using the term natural disaster as a, a, in place of what we used to say as an act of God. Um, and then now, today, we really, um, while we still, you'll still see natural disasters, the, the phrase natural disaster is pretty common, we really talk more about this, this complex mix of, of human and uh, natural forces that come together um, to produce the, the bad things that happen. And we mentioned that uh, this Sendai uh, disaster framework is um, a really, uh, is the most sort of robust one that um, people use from country to country. Consist people have different flavors of this inside their country. When we talk about things like the UN or multinational NGOs, this is sort of the, the most popular uh, way to, to categorize these things. And the, and the highlighted green things are the, are the, the examples that we'll be um, talking about this semester. But suffice it to say, there are, there are things that we won't um, talk very much about but still fall into this framework. Okay. So our first activity uh, is going to be, um, uh, you guys are going to fill out some stuff. So we'll, let, let's test some hypotheses, right? So this is our first activity. The, the, the formal official stuff will be due um, end of the week, but we're going to start doing it now. And in general, we're going to try to do more of these, of these active things here in class. And I'll, and I'll be starting to uh, pivot to do more of my lectures recorded for you guys to watch. And we could spend more of our time together doing these kinds of things. So, so the basic idea is, so let's, so, so, you know, Dr. A just said, Dr. A just said that people used to use the term act of God and used to use the term, or, or, or that was replaced by natural disasters, right? But let's see if that's really true. So let's see how we articulate, um, uh, uh, how, we, how we describe and refer to these um, uh, events in our, our media. So we'll do a couple things here, but we're going to start with this first one. So you guys, so we'll go over this in a second, but we have a, a shared Google Sheet. 
that you guys are going to enter stuff into, and then we're going to all pool our data as a class so that you guys will, will, you'll do a little bit of work, and your neighbor's going to do a little bit of work, and then he's going to do a little bit of work, and she's going to do a little bit, all that kind of stuff. And then we'll pool it together to, to sort of test, to, to see what's going on. And so what are we going to do? Okay, so first, we're going to search for, everybody's been assigned, you'll see it when we open up the, the, the sheet, but everybody's been assigned a different a category of disaster, okay? And then what you're going to do is you're going to do for six times, you're going to search for, um, and, and my suggestion would be to use the, you know, I, I said you guys should have subscription to, um, you know, a, a national media organization newspaper. Um, so my suggestion is to use one of those. You don't have to, but, but that's, that's probably the, the easiest for you. And so the key thing here is when we do this kind of stuff, and we're asking what the general public is, I don't want to know what you, what your habits tell me, right? You guys are ESRM majors, anthro majors, that kind of stuff. You've already been probably looking at, at a certain type of news story or, or using a certain type of search terms in your browser. I don't want that at all. I want, I want clean, naive, um, no bias, right? And so there's a couple different ways we can do that. You can, you can have your browser go incognito, but that doesn't really do much. They just say they don't add to your history, but Google and everybody still complete, completely tracks you, absolutely knows who you are, absolutely knows your browsing history, absolutely knows the kind of stories you'd like to read. Again, that's, that's um, not as good. A better thing would be to use something like a Tor browser or, or something that, that anonymizes you. Um, or if you don't have access to that easy, just go to the DuckDuckGo search engine. So that's one that um, does not track you, does not, does not collect cookies and all that kind of stuff. And so when you put your search terms in there, it's not going to be also generating a search result based on whatever the last things you've been doing for the last six months, that kind of thing. Cool? So you're going to uh, go on and you're going to search for this stuff. You're going to do it uh, six times with the phrase natural disaster and, and your you know, earthquakes or whatever it is that you've been assigned. And you're going to find six articles, and you'll see it. We'll look at it in a second. You're going to see it, and you're going to fill out each essay. You say what the article is, what the title is, blah, 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 blah. And then uh, we're going to do the same for Act of God. Uh, and we're going to see, hey, are there certain types of disasters? So this is, this is our key thing we're wondering about. Are there certain types of disasters that we tend to more describe a, as natural disasters? Are there certain certain type of disasters that we tend to say are more acts of God, right? Which, which harkens back to the had no idea, could not possibly predict, totally out of the blue kind of thing, right? Does that make sense? Uh, one of our modules for this week, a module for this week, but also I just blasted out as, a, as an um, announcement. So before you click on your computer, just have a look up here. Let me make this bigger so it's easier. So we'll all just look at it together. Now there's a couple things we're going to do. So we're going to start on this first tab here that says um, Act of God. So that's what we're going to work on. And so again, the, the question here is, do we associate certain disasters with particular terms? That's what we're, that's what we're looking at, OK? And so, so I have an example. Row 6 here is just an example where I fill it out so you can kind of get the idea, right? And so. Um, I'm going to say what the, the title of the article, a hyperlink to it, where it came from, the date it was published, where it happened, and then uh, the ecosystem. And if you want to add some notes here, there's a, we always have a place to add notes or something, something funky or something you want to explain or whatever. Okay, and then um, so uh, Autumn has uh, drought, right? And so if we look, everybody's been assigned six things that are whatever their thing is, drought and natural disasters. And then uh, act of God and, and drought. Make sense? And so you guys are just going to do your searches, find your things, and put them in here. Um, uh, now, for most people, it's going to be like that. Earthquake, blah, 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 wildfire, blah, 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 blah. Um, but note, there are a few things that I've color-coded. So while flood and sea level rise aren't exactly the same thing, they're, they're fairly closely related. A lot of times, the sea level rise is manifested as, as flooding. Um, hurricane, we'll get to this when we eventually talk about hurricanes, but, but hurricane is the term that we, apply, we in North America uh, apply to things that happen in, the, in our part of the Atlantic or our part of the Pacific. So we call those hurricanes. Same exact thing as a cyclone. 
um, as a typhoon. It's the same phenomenon, it's just a different region we, we, we apply that term, but it's the same exact thing. Nevertheless, um, so there's three people that are doing this, and so, so again, we have these, um, these terms that are basically the same thing, but, but you guys can pursue them individually, but um, that's what the color is indicating. And then we have um, pandemic and disease outbreak are kind of basic, they don't, again, not exactly the same thing, but they're, they, they could be the same thing, um, as, as well as pestilence. And then rain and atmospheric river and Pineapple Express. Pineapple Express, again, we'll talk about this when we get to this. But Pineapple Express used to be the term we'd use for these very, very wet storms that would hit us this time of year coming out of the Pacific, coming from sort of the Hawaii area, the tropics, sort of warm, and then dumping on us a, like really, really lots of water. Um, now, uh, for the last uh, uh, four or five years, we actually have a forecasting tool that comes out of scripts. Um, and so we've, we've officially um, used the term atmospheric river and now use this in weather forecasting. So, so different terms for, you know, potentially the same thing. Rain is not the same, but you guys get it's related. Um, monsoon is another, you know, huge dumping of rain. Um, and then uh, extreme heat and heat wave are, are related. And while usually those are in the air, we also have a phenomenon known as marine heat waves. And this, this historically hasn't made a lot of news, but starting about 2016, this started making some more news. And then especially this past year, it, it started making major headlines. I think those are the only ones. Oh, and the Santa Ana winds and Derek Joe. And so, so, so those guys are um, sort of similar. Um, so if you're one of these, if you're one of these uh, uh, folks, it's all good. We just want to make sure, particularly if you're one of these folks that has one of these shared ones, we just want to make sure these are independent grabs. So when I'm putting this in, I want, I want all unique articles. And so it, 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 it could be that, that someone searching for this and someone searching for this found the same article. You guys just double check. And so before we finish up, another reason we're doing this as a group is you can go, oh, yeah, hey, uh, why don't you take that one? I'll get another one or whatever. So we're, we're fair. Does that make sense? Every clear we're doing? Okay, so let's take a few minutes and you guys uh, take your first stab at that and, uh, and we'll go from there. Okay, as you guys are wrapping that up, we'll, we'll uh, uh, pivot over here. So great, so you guys get the idea of how we're filling that, that stuff out. All right, um, keep continuing on our, our introduction to the idea of disasters. Um, uh, one of the common tools that we've created over the last couple decades is this so-called uh, understanding of the, the phases of a disaster or the cycle of disaster. And uh, this one I think is a useful way. Um, so I'm showing you here sort of four phases, but depending, but there's different variants of this. Some people talk about three phases, some people talk four, some people talk five, but, but they're all, um, no matter how we slice it up, the ideas are, all, at least the concepts are similar. Sometimes this is called the emergency management cycle. This has really grown up uh, with things like FEMA and, and the attempt to professionalize our response to, to a disaster and, and make it less ad hoc and make it more consistent from, from place to place to place and that kind of stuff. Um, and so, uh, yeah, and so the, the, the idea is um, this is going to start before the event happens, and then it's going to go through the event, and then it's going to go um, all the way uh, after the event, and then uh, with the recognition that these things um, aren't like a once in a million year thing, that's, that another one's going to come around at some point very soon or at some point a little bit farther. The idea is that we understand this is a, a common part of our experience. Um, so this is, this is this, this conceptual idea. And here are the four main levels. I've added a fifth, um, and sometimes the, 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 the first and second level are merged. But, but um, the, in the example I showed you with the four arrows, that's the mitigation, preparedness, response, and recovery. And um, the um, mitigation is to prevent the conditions that set up the disaster or if we can't prevent it, if we can't prevent an earthquake, let's take some actions, again, before the event happens so that when it does happen, it has minor uh, impact. And that perhaps the, the clearest example of that 
would be something like earthquake building codes, right? So before, back in the day, we didn't have anything. People would build stuff, and then we'd have an earthquake, and things would fall down, right? And so the first mitigation there, at least if we take the California example, the first mitigation was about making structures more survivable. So when the earthquake happens, the lights might fall and the, and the water line might break, but you and I won't get squished inside the building, right? And then after the shaking stops, we can safely exit the building and get to a safe place, and that's all good. And, and that was sort of the, the old approach. Now the current approach is that's not good enough. Recognizing is another thing we'll be talking about in this class, that, that things are just really expensive to repair. Let's now design our buildings, not just so that they're survivable for you and me, let's design our buildings such that um, they're, they don't break when the shaking happens. And so we don't need to repair them or we need to do minimal repair after. So all of that would be in the, in the, the pre-event um, uh, the, the pre happening or the mitigation phases. Okay. Um, the preparedness phase is the one where we're getting um, ready for the actual event. So if we know that um, wildfires are going to, um, uh, you know, um, uh, make us have to evacuate animals and horses and stuff like that, let's set up some agreements where we can take horses and animals to different shelters, things of that nature, right? Okay, so we're, get, we're preparing, maybe, maybe storing in the case of COVID, now we're starting to store face masks and starting to store personal protective gear, that kind of stuff, right? So we're gonna stockpile that in strategic areas, that kind of thing. Uh, then we have the event, and then um, uh, when the event actually happens, we have the structures to respond consistently, professionally, and safely, right? So we all know examples, we can all think of examples of some horrible disaster and, and the local folks are completely overwhelmed and people are there and, and people are physically pulling through rubble or whatever with their bare hands, right? Um, that's not ideal, right? That, that'll happen, but, but ideally is we have folks with protective gear, with the right types of search dogs and the right type of, of uh, mechanical devices to, to remove structures and things of that nature. So ideally we have a professional response that's capable and trained and prepared and, and, and has drilled with how to, let's say, uh, get people safely out of a fire zone or get people safely out of, out of a tsunami a warning area or something of that nature. And then once, once that, um, the response phase happens, we enter what's known as the recovery phase. And so that's after, you know, we've, we've helped everybody survive we can, we've, got, we've gotten the fires out, we've gotten the stuff contained, and now we need to, say, rebuild the roads and things of that nature. So that's the recovery phase. And then once we ex exit the recovery phase, then we kind of say, oh, man, we really should have had the buildings like this instead of the way they were. And so then that takes us back to the top of the, top of the cycle. Is that cool? All right. And, so th and this really does apply to just about all of the things we're going to talk about in this class. Now, it, it, it might take a different form, but this idea, this consistent approach to to uh, thinking about before, just after, in the wake of, um, is, is a key part of modern um, disasters. Uh, these are the key players for us in terms of um, what happens. So FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, which really was birthed in the 1970s and has undergone, has been a political football under some entities, um, it's, it really was professionalized uh, as we sort of know it now uh, in the 90s under the Clinton administration. Um, and uh, the, the FEMA stands for Federal Emergency Management Agency and is a sucking together of what were disparate, uh, di di disparate um, federal uh, actors, so housing and, and healthcare and things of that nature. Um, and so FEMA is our lead federal agency in the wake of a disaster, both for on the ground stuff and then the later recovery and that kind of stuff. Uh, obviously we have state governments, so the state of California um, has a large, what's known as an EMS, emergency management system uh, uh, framework and approaches. We have our local governments, so that would be county and or city, depending on where we live. Um, and then we just have uh, folks that are 
that are in the immediate area that are impacted, and those those folks will respond, and those folks will will take some actions either lead before the disaster um, to maybe, for example, in the case of wildfire, be, be clearing their property so there's not a lot of brush, so it's at either at less risk of burning, or if a fire comes, it's it's, it's um, won't move as fast across their their property or near their house or something of that nature. Um, and then we have uh, sort of this the volunteer amalgamation of which we here at CSUCI play a large role in, in various disasters helping out folks um, either um, by, by taking you guys to help recovery or by serving as um, a volunteer entity for people to bring um, people to or, or what have you. So we have, a, we have a, a mix here of big government, medium government, small government, locals, and, and, and church groups and volunteer groups and all that kind of jazz. Okay, so if we talk about the first phase, this is that prevention phase, and um, this is gonna be anything, and, and, and so here I'm lumping, so here I'm just using sort of the, the four category things, so I'm kind of lumping the prevention and mitigation together because they're not really, so we go, John. Well, what are you saying the other Oh, I'm sorry. So this stands for non-governmental organization. Yeah, I apologize. Yeah, so that would be um, anything from um, a, a specific disaster um, uh, uh, a group that, that specifically helps with disasters, um, either, either broads do, do all kinds of stuff, like shelter box in Santa Barbara that's constantly sending um, emergency equipment out to different areas, something like uh, uh, Doctors Without Borders, right, um, that, that serves both food for people and shelter for people and health care for people in, in impacted areas, things of that nature. Um, and it also includes folks that are highly specialized. So groups like Drones for Good, where uh, they train regular amateur drone pilots to help in the wake of a disaster. And so, so maybe it, the NGO could have a very, very specific um, focus or be very general. And they could be um, uh, uh, faith-based, they could be discipline-based, they could be regional-based, um, so all over the place. So that's a non-governmental organization. You, you might hear the term nonprofit is also used for, for some of these guys. Cool, other questions? Okay, great. Okay, so for this uh, prevention slash mitigation phase, um, this is anything that's going to happen, again, before the event happens. So this is the pre-impact pre uh, stuff. And it's either going to reduce the likelihood of it, of it happening in the first place, or whenever it does happen, the, the impacts will be relatively minim minimized compared to if we had not done anything. Um, right, so that's pretty obvious. Mitigation, prevention. Okay. Um, and then this is where we're specifically working on what we're going to do during the event. So, okay, we're going to have a certain number of, of fire stations around. We're going to have a certain amount of cached equipment. We're going to have some backup uh, power to our um, water supply pumps so that we can, if the, if the grid goes down or, or Southern California Edison has to turn off the power, we can still, say, move water, um, that kind of stuff. And these are going to, and the goal of this um, phase is to make sure that we are more, more rapidly and more successfully dealing with the event when, when the event actually does happen. So the, the previous one was prevention. This is get through it as quickly and safely as possible. Um, and then there's the actual thing the, the, when, after the event happens. And so uh, uh, key with this is um, safety, and that's great, that's important. I think sometimes we get a little bit too worried about safety. I mean, we should never be too worried about safety, but, but, but um, um, uh, we wanna make sure that everybody's trained. So we're not sending people into helping pull people out of a fallen down building or sending them walking over crumbling coastal cliffs to look for survivors when they don't fully understand the risks and could just hurt themselves or create more of a problem, let's say. 
Um, want to make sure everybody knows how to handle rescuing people around down, uh, uh, potentially live electric wires so that they don't go in and get electrocuted themselves and then they need to get you know, uh, uh, rescued, that kind of stuff. Uh, and so this is both individuals but also governments. So all of our governments, all of our local regional will have some kind of disaster plan. Our campus has a disaster plan. Um, we call it the business continuity uh, uh, plan, but there's, there's, there's similar things with different organizations, et cetera, and governments. Um, and also so our social institutions, so, so our um, hospitals and things of that nature that they can function and, and will know how to, how to work. Um, uh, the response is going to take as long as the response takes, but there's some time critical things here because folks that are uh, se severely wounded or trapped or severely wounded need, you know, water and food and, and those types of things. And so, so there's a key window of 72 hours usually that we talk about of the survivability. We always have the miraculous, you know, heartwarming story of the little girl that was pulled out of the rubble after a week or something of that nature, and that's great, but that's not the norm, right? The norm is most people, we need to get to them very quickly after the event to, to maximize the likelihood of them surviving and, and surviving well. Um, and so, so that's really the response phase. This is the one that's all in the evening news, it's very dramatic, and it's, you know, search dogs and all that kind of stuff. Um, uh, dramatic visuals and things of that nature. Okay, and then, then we, we finish the primary response, the initial response, and then we move into recovery. And this is after the event stopped happening, the fire's out, the, the, the um, you know, people have all been rescued that, that we could rescue, et cetera. Um, and, uh, and, and, and how, how are we going to um, not have secondary effects, right, which we'll talk more about, but, but minimize the stress on people financially, minimize the stress on people psychologically, minimize the stress on people for, on homelessness, all, all those various uh, metrics that will um, have make these disasters have a very long tail. So we're trying to shrink that long tail. Let's get, let's get things fixed, let's get things recovered. Everybody thinks we can do this very, very fast. Everybody wants to do this very, very, very fast. Rarely is this fast. Um, and, and oftentimes when it's super, super fast, it's not necessarily great. It, it maybe isn't done the best way possible. Okay, so just a couple uh, quick examples here and then we're gonna get close to running out of time. But I wanna show you guys the next thing. So. Um, Actually, we'll come back to this. We'll come back to this. Let's come back to this because I want to talk about um, I want to talk about the, the, the next part of our of our data sheet, the next tab, and so that is this. So, so first, you guys are telling me about um, about you know how we articulate the um, the uh, words that we use to describe the event. But here's another one let's talk about. So this one is common myths. And I have, there's, there, I have more than this, but these are just a couple we'll talk about. One is that whenever you have a disaster, everybody panics and there's mass chaos, right? That can absolutely happen when there's fire beating down on you or the buildings are shaking. But rarely do we see that, right? Rarely do we see that. I mean, during the shaking, sure, but, but once that initial you know, the very, very first part subsides, rarely do people run around with their heads cut off like you see in all these disaster movies, right? Normally people are super freaked out, they're super scared, but they don't, but they help one another. They pause and help their neighbor out, they, they check on people, they're much calmer than, than the common myth is, right? Um, uh, that doesn't necessarily last forever, but, but but this notion that everybody just runs around with their head cut off is not, is, is a myth. Uh, next, that disasters always bring out the worst in us. That's a very common myth you'll hear. Um, and that pe all, people are just looting, people are just doing horrible things and all that kind of bad stuff. In reality, most of the time, times people um, help each other. And what we see is looting is actually people are just need diapers for their kids and there's nowhere to get diapers or there's no water to drink, right? Not all. Of course, there is looting that happens, stuff, but, but the myth is that, oh, all these people loot, right? And you'll see that mostly tied to um, more uh, historically excluded communities. People have this bias, oh, those, those people will go and loot, or those people will go and riot. That, that, um, 
does happen sometimes, but, but nowhere near what the popular conception is. Um, well, also, as you'll, as you'll see in news coverage also, particularly, is it always seems to focus, or often focuses on individuals. There's a heroic firefighter who's such a hero, right? Or there's a horrible, evil, bad guy who owned the apartment building, who didn't do the right thing, and that guy's the problem, right? So we tend to, in our media, in the Western media, we tend to focus on the savior or the villain, right? As opposed to the systemic issues, the, the, the things that are going on everywhere and all over the place and all the time. So we, we very much have this myth about the individual as the, the, the solution or the source of all the badness. Next, uh, another common one we have is that uh, the survivors are helpless, the survivors are broken, the survivors can't do anything. Um, the survivors are just sitting around with their hand out for aid. You'll hear that in certain, certain news outlets and things of that nature. Uh, not true, by and large. Um, uh, that there's always some things that always come after disasters, such as um, epidemics, particularly waterborne. In some places, absolutely. In some places with poor infrastructure, with not good sanitation to begin with, that is a major concern. But just because a disaster happens does not mean we necessarily will see epidemics, particularly in places like California, even though you'll hear that uh, frequently. Um, another uh, common myth is you'll hear, um, and this is oftentimes espoused by, by the people that experience a disaster, we just want to get back to normal. We just want to get back to that. We just want things to get back the way they were. And so there's this myth that, that we will be able to quickly return to normal, one, or two, that should be the goal. The goal should be to return back exactly the way it used to be, and that, that's what we want. And so those are very common um, uh, myths that you'll hear people talk about. And so to relate, relate that is that we should replicate, again, uh, not that we should, either, we should either quick, and we should make things just the way they were before. Um, usually that's probably not what we should do because that, because obviously we were vulnerable to the problem, right? So, so maybe we should build the house more strongly or, or, or the roads more wider so we can get fire trucks in or whatever the case may be. Um, and then another big one, particularly in the last few decades, is that um, s stealing and fraud is the norm. So that all these people that experience disaster, they're going to they're gonna suck all these resources away from us. And, uh, and, and cause badness. So therefore, we really, really got to focus on this. And that's a huge um, problem I'll, I'll talk about later. But um, those are some common myths. Um, OK, so on the second tab on our sheet to fill out is similar. In this case, again, just like before, you want to use, don't use your default browser, right? We, we, want, we want clean searches here, right? So DuckDuckGo or whatever. Um, but what I have listed here are, are uh, these and a, and, a f and a few related ones. You'll see there's a, a couple more here. Um, uh, uh, myths about a disaster. And so, uh, so the people panic after the disaster. Either, either people are panicking or people will panic. You know, so so one, one of those kind of things. Uh, looting, something about looting. People are stealing, all this kind of stuff. Uh, the, 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 we have a lone hero, usually it's an EMS worker or a helicopter pilot or something like that. I'm like, oh man, what a hero. Um, or, uh, you know, the developer that did this particular thing and, and led to the problem or something like that. Or the corrupt politician or somebody that allowed some bad ac action to happen or something. Um, not the system that didn't catch that. Not the system that didn't catch that badness, but it was that, that one bad dude. Um, uh, that survivors are just waiting around, the disease outbreaks are inevitable, um, and it's possible to return to normal quickly. Um, the best outcome is that we replicate these disaster conditions. Fraud is common, and fraud is something we really, really need to put a lot of effort into. Let's not get these people any money, because we really need to set up these fraud prevention systems as these people are starving and, and dying in front of us. Um, and then, in, in the last few years, particularly, this conspiratorial sense, right? This, this crazy QAnon and all this kind of stuff. That, um, that someone intentionally caused this disaster. Or if they didn't cause it with space lasers or whatever the hell they're using, uh, they made it worse, right? So, so they maybe didn't start it, but they set the conditions so it was really gonna wipe out this community or something. Similar, similar to this, outsiders are coming in after the disaster. And now that we're weakened and we have no money and we're hurt, they're gonna start taking up all of our land, right? Um, uh, 
there's reasons why these things have resonance, mostly because these communities are historically marginalized and these com communities have been screwed over historically. So they're, they're primed to think that they're going to get screwed over in the wake of the disaster. But nevertheless, these, there's rarely evidence for this, um, particularly in the early parts of the disaster. Um, and then another very common one, and you'll hear this particularly with the, the re our representatives that are in charge of keeping us safe and stuff, they'll say, ah, no one knew. Mm, act of God, couldn't have predicted it. Who knew? No one thought, right? I mean, just go ahead and say what you want. Um, with, the, with the Maui wildfires, uh, we were talking to some guys, and they're like, yeah, every 80 years, Lahaina burns, regardless, every 80 years. So, um, so the notion that, oh, my God, this couldn't happen in the wake of Hurricane Katrina. Oh, my God, no one predicted. Really? You mean like the, the news stories that were in the, the major newspaper modeling exactly what would happen for the last three years? I mean, nobody predicted that? Oh, interesting. So, so this is a common myth. Um, and then a, a last one is that insurance will make you whole. Right, so business owners, homeowners, whatever, we have to have insurance, right? Either we, we have insurance just for our peace of mind or if we say have a loan to the bank, we're legally required to have home insurance. And the thought is that, oh, if I have a problem, I might, might have a deductible, but then once I pay my deductible, then I'll be made whole. No, no, rarely, if ever, does that happen. Okay. Uh, is on this tab here, right? And so again, I have some examples, and I've assigned everybody. I've assigned everybody. Just sort of, you know, everybody is going to do. Two, you know, it's just a sort of random grab. We're going to do two of these, and so uh, Autumn is going to do, for example, in this one, she's going to do what's that? Uh, looting is common. And so just like you found, this could be an article that you found before, but it could also be totally different. It might need to be different. And so just like before, you're going to say. Again, uh, again, you can use, sorry, this is hard to show on the screen, but um, so you're going to say the article title, let's see if I can make it squeeze on here. Yeah, so article title, hyperlink, et cetera, disaster type. In this case, you're going to tell me what the disaster is, right? So is this a flooding thing? Is this an earthquake thing or whatever? Um, where it is, again, the ecosystem. And so, again, the, the key question that we're trying to ask here is, um, are certain myths associated with particular disasters? Are, are earthquakes more likely to say, that um, there's going to be fraud being done or something of that nature. Is that cool? And so you guys will fill that out and, uh, and we'll keep going. Uh, please see if you can fill this out. It's, it, officially, it's due on Friday, but if you could please get it done by next class, that would be really cool because then we could look at it as a class.